uh, we have a special bonus, which is that my colleague, Amr Hamzawi, uh, is in Cairo, and we have him on the telephone. He's going to give us a quick update on how he sees the uh, signs in Cairo, and if we can keep the telephone line open, he might be able to take a couple of your questions. So, Amr, can you, can you hear me now? I can hear you well, Michelle. Okay, wonderful to have you with us, Amr. Uh, so please tell us, how do you see the situation going? How do you see the security situation and the political situation developing at this point? Right, let me, let me start by, uh, by the second, which is the political situation. And let me excuse uh, the fact that I am, I am uh, at a checkpoint um, uh, right now, so it might turn a bit loud. Um, um, with regard to the political situation, and I find it quite uh, challenging to uh, separate in my mind between the analyst and the activist, who I have come to be in the last days. Uh, so I'm, it might sound more like an activist uh, and less, um, less uh, as an analyst, but I, I, I hope you, you will still find it useful. What is happening politically is that we finally um, uh, have a sort of a political roadmap for uh, for the way ahead for for the transitional period, the interview which General Suleiman, the vice president, gave a few minutes ago, and it was clear what he was going to say. Uh, a bit of what he said was leaked already. Uh, sounded very positive at uh, at four levels. One, uh, he opened up um, uh, the transitional period with regard to the constitutional amendments to more than Article 76 and 77. He spoke specifically about Article 88, which is the article that uh, pertains to the uh, judicial supervision over uh, Egyptian elections. And he even said that whatever um, uh, is going to be agreed upon as an article in the Constitution that needs to be amended in the timeline given, which is 70 days, and the Constitution articles can be looked at depending on the outcome of his dialogue with the opposition. Uh, this sounded encouraging. Uh, the second uh, issue which sounded encouraging as well was the fact that he said he has started already his dialogue with the opposition and that he did not exclude anyone. I mean, uh, what he said about the Muslim Brotherhood was quite encouraging in that context, that they do have a chance, it's a precious chance, uh, as he said, and he is encouraging them uh, along with the WAV and the Tagamma party that are yet to join the dialogue, to join the dialogue and speak with them. Um, the third level, which is um, uh, sort of was one of the central demands that we, and here I'm referring to a group of people uh, who put out yesterday a statement, maybe you read it, Michelle and everyone else, we are being called Lagnet al Hukama, which is a committee of wise uh, men, the first time for myself to be characterized as a wise man. Um, um, uh, uh, we, we were calling on the president who give the vice president uh, all the presidential powers needed to manage the transition. And he has started to manage the transition effectively today. He has started to manage the transition effectively today. It's, 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 it's what he said. So we are seeing a delegation, even without an annou announcement of presidential powers, to Vice President Suleiman to manage the transition period. Uh, the fourth encouraging sign uh, of the vice president is that he said he he and the authorities are going to put on trial everyone who was responsible for the violence last night, the violence today at the Tahrir Square, as well as the violence in the last days. And he said that uh, uh, the young demonstrators who were detained and activists who were detained are going to be freed as long as they were not implicated in violence. And as you know, most of them, all of them were not implicated in violence. So these were, were encouraging signs and a sort of a road map for how to transition to, uh, to democracy in, uh, uh, in Egypt. Now, what remains, what remains uh, contested and what's going to be a question for the next days is the following. Uh, what, number one, uh, one of our demands and other people's demands were to dissolve the parliament, which was its two chambers outcome of rigged elections. And General Suleiman said, and he had an argument about the timeline, that if you dissolve the parliament, you will not have enough time to amend the constitution. He said, let's amend the constitution, get it right for the presidential elections. He assured everyone that the democratic demands of the young uh, movements as well as the opposition parties will be respected. 
let's get get them amended with this current uh, parliament and see what will come next. This is going to be a, an issue of contestation, probably part of the dialogue which he has with parties as well as with personalities like the group which were, which which um, uh, gave gave put out the statement I am referring to. The second point of contestation is basically to end, which we demand as the many as well, to end the violence immediately against uh, activists as well as against against activists as well as against uh, demonstrators uh, in, in, in Cairo and other places across, uh, across the nation. And he has uh, promised to end the violence immediately and made it very clear that this was not the resp responsibility of uh, uh, state institutions or state authorities, but drug elements apparently within the security apparatus. He referred even to businessmen, corrupt businessmen, and so on and so forth. But the end of violence is key. Uh, the third issue is that he is asking everyone to free, uh, to stop demonstrating, free at Tahrir Square, and of course refrain from staging a, ma a massive demonstration tomorrow. And this remains uh, contested among the different uh, protesting groups and activists. I tend to see it as a concession which now we have to give since the roadmap is clear and since we are entering into uh, negotiations and since some uh, concrete steps were announced. Uh, finally, um, uh, there, there is a great need for safeguards, uh, constitutional safeguards, political safeguards, as well as uh, safeguards from the military establishment as to how the transition is going to be managed. I guess this is an issue which will be um, um, sort of, of a gradual process, not too long, but we basically are looking at six months, 200 days, as he said. So we need guarantees, we need safeguards, and he will still have to assure um, uh, people that this is not going to be uh, violated the commitment to democratic change and reform. That's it from my side, and I'm I'm happy to take uh, any questions uh, uh, from 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 the audience. Okay, uh, if I could just start with one quick one. There was uh, one word that I didn't hear in your presentation, Mubarak. What? Uh, yeah. What's the deal? What's what's Suleiman offering here in terms of does Mubarak continue to be there during this this 200-day transition or not? Yes. Well, the agreement, Michelle, and the consensus, and I'm not sure about the Muslim Brotherhood, and I'm not sure about the Baradai, uh, but other groups as well as independent uh, personalities have agreed on the following formula, which is President Mubarak is going to stay in office as. Uh, more or less, quote unquote, a honorary uh, president. He will not. He will not. Um, uh, he will delegate uh, the authorities uh, to manage the transitional period to, to the vice president Suleiman, who has started with that management today. This is a face-saving solution, which is, to my mind, widely accepted in Egypt among many people. President Mubarak in his last speech has appealed very emotionally to, 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 to Egyptians by stating that Egypt is his country, he was born here and he would like to die here. Of course, the calls to remove President Mubarak was not to remove him from the country, but to remove him from power. What we are seeing is an indirect, um, an, an indirect um, uh, application of that by giving President Sule uh, Vice President Suleiman the authorities to manage the transition period. I guess this is an issue which uh, will remain contested among some groups. I myself don't see it as problematic, and I see it as a face-saving uh, strategy which um, uh, we need to manage a safe transition to democracy. We cannot. Uh, we cannot go on with, with the violence and the chaos which we had, and, and the rogue elements, be it in the NDP or in the security apparatus, need to be brought under control. People are terrified, are running out of food, are running out of uh, oil, of, of ga gasoline, and so on and so forth. So it's, um, it's, it's a compromise, and I guess it satisfies many people, and I am one of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, Amr, thank you very much. I have